What's going on everybody and welcome on into this video. We're going to be going over the Weeble platform, every aspect of the platform, well, hopefully pretty much every aspect here in this video. It will be a full pretty much course guide going over the features, how to use the platform, commissions, fees, all of that stuff here in this video. And we will have detailed timestamps in the description box. So if you have a specific question, that will be the place to go to find that specific answer. As we dive through, there should be a lot of timestamps down there. So make sure you check that out before we dive in if you have a specific question because the video may be quite long. And if you're someone who's already used the platform, you may not need to see every single thing that we talk about in this video. So like I mentioned, that will be down there. There also will be the link down below to sign up with Weeble. This video is not sponsored by any means. I just wanted to make this video because I feel like we need an update in the YouTube community. I haven't really seen an updated video to this degree uh, based on the new features that we have with the desktop platform and the mobile app here with Weeble. So there will be a link down below to sign up and get some free stocks with Weeble. That promotion is changing when I'm filming this video. You can sign up and get two free stocks when you deposit $5 with that link in the description box and a pinned comment. That may change as you're watching this video. So of course, refer to that link and they'll tell you what promotion they're running at the time. So first off, what is Weeble right here? Weeble is essentially a trading brokerage platform. Not only can you trade stocks, but you can also now trade crypto and they're building out that crypto platform and the capabilities that they have with the crypto platform as we speak. As of right now though, when you trade crypto on Weeble, you cannot hold it as a wallet, like a wallet feature. So you can trade crypto with as little as $1, and here are the cryptocurrencies that you can currently trade on the platform. They are now scrolling across the screen. They started out with just a few and they've been expanding that quite a bit as the past few months have gone along. But again, you'll be trading them. You won't be able to kind of store it or send it to, to a different wallet or whatnot. So it's just kind of trading in the price action. And that's all you can do with the platform right now when it comes to cryptocurrency. But outside of that, you can trade stocks, options, ETFs on this platform and the great thing about it is they just included fractional shares. So you can invest with as little as $5 into any stock you would like. So now you don't have to worry about going to like the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples and saying, yeah, I can't buy a full share. Well, you can now buy fractional shares. You don't have to be able to buy a full share or you can buy a share and a half. You can buy whatever you want. As long as you have $5 to invest in an ETF or a stock, well, you can get started with that, which makes this very appealing Nowadays, because the problem was with, you know, a Weeble platform that had a lot of additional features compared to, let's say, a Robinhood, Weeble didn't have fractional shares, Weeble didn't have some of the features that Robinhood had that made it appealing to the average everyday investor. Now, Weeble definitely fits that need quite a bit here when it comes to the fractional shares. On top of fractional shares, we do also want to mention the different account types. You can have an individual brokerage account, or you can also create a IRA account. So you can have a traditional Roth or rollover IRA when you sign up for Weeble account. Personally, I actually have two accounts with Weeble. I have a traditional brokerage account or an individual brokerage account, and then I have a Roth IRA that I also have on the Weeble platform. So to answer that question of can you have multiple accounts? Yes, you can have multiple accounts with Weeble. The next thing here we also want to mention is the full extended hours trading. So traditionally, right, the market's open from 9.30 a.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. Well, with Weeble, you get access to pre-market and after-market hours, but full hours, right? So you have from 4 a.m. Eastern all the way to that market open of 9.30 a.m. Eastern. That is the pre-market hours. And then from 9.30 a.m. Eastern, of course, you can trade all the way to 4 p.m. Eastern. That's regular market hours. And then from 4 p.m. all the way to 8 p.m., that is the after hours. And you could, of course, trade again during those hours. You'll just need to make sure that you click extended hours when you are trading during those time periods, but you have access to that, which definitely makes Weeble a lot more appealing compared to some other brokerage platforms. For example, the Robinhood, where they don't have nearly the extended hours that Weeble has. So for example, on Robinhood, I don't think you can start trading until 9 a.m. Eastern, and then that stops at 6 p.m. Eastern. So if you're trading certain stocks that are volatile in the after hours and pre-market hours, you're going to want to make sure you have a brokerage platform that gives you access to this. Weeble also allows you to get access to NASDAQ total view level two quotes. And so we've actually talked about this in prior videos on this channel and my other channels, but we've talked about this and it's actually really cool because you can see beyond the bid and the ask. So if you're looking at level one, take a look at the left-hand side right here. You get the bid, you get the ask. That's great. Level two is going to show you more details. So it's gonna show you the size of the orders down on the left-hand side 
or the right hand side. And it's going to show you on the bid and left on the ask on the right, what price point, how large of an order is sitting at that price point. So it'll tell you where bidders are stacking up and where ask or where sellers are stacking up. And then it'll really be a great indicator to say, okay, there's a resistance point here. There's a support point here based on a bid support, or we have a seller on the ask at this point or a short at that point on the ask. Now to make sure this is enabled, you'll have to go in to your app and you'll have to go to the settings portion of your Webull app. And then you'll be able to enable it on the advanced quotes section of the app. We also, I don't want to just make this only video as your one-stop shop. We do have other videos on the channel and in our Webull playlist going over other specific aspects. So we actually reviewed the newest updated app. I believe it was Webull 7.0 at the time of that update. And we covered pretty much everything on the app. This will be kind of a broad overview of everything, but we covered everything on the app. And so we show you guys how to get access to level two quotes on there as well. So that's a good place to go as well as that playlist, which will be linked here on the channel because that playlist will have tons of videos as we create more. And in the past that we talked about different aspects to Webull and different aspects. We dive deeper and we go a little more into depth. So now in terms of what Webull has to offer to you, when it comes down to it, you're going to get access to the web app, the desktop app, and the mobile app for free. Okay. So your mobile device, go to the app store and you can download it. Android, iPhone, doesn't matter. You'll be able to do the same thing on a PC or Mac. They may look a little bit different, but it's the same exact thing. We're using a Mac here in this video. And so hopefully kind of, you can at least understand if you're using a PC, it may be slightly different in terms of the exact layout or look, but that's what you need to know. Now the mobile app, all that stuff is free. What do you need to pay for? Here's where we're gonna dive into some fees and commissions. Well, Webull first off is a zero commission brokerage platform. So for ETFs, stocks, options, you're not paying commissions to Webull, but there are some fees and there are some things you need to be sure you're aware of when you start using the platform. So if you're going to be using margin, okay, if you have a margin account and you have at least $2,000 in your account, you can qualify. Now, depending upon your balance, this is your annualized margin rate. So that margin rate comes down the more money you have on the platform. Okay. So starting out between zero and $25,000, you're looking at a 6.99% annual margin rate. But if you got over $3 million on the platform, 3.99% is your annual margin rate. There's also short seller fees. So here's how you calculate short selling fees to get that number, that fee, that daily margin interest that you're going to pay per day, the daily market value of the borrowed stocks when the market closes times the stock loan rate for that stock divided by 360. So what you'll look at here is when you're looking to short a stock, if there is a number that says, Hey, this is a hard to borrow stock. The annual margin rate is 68%, for example. Well, that is going to factor into this equation. Okay. The stock loan rate for that stock divided by 360 times the daily market value of the borrowed stocks when the market closes. Okay. Because when you're shorting, you're borrowing shares to then ideally buy back at a cheaper price. Now we have a full video going over how to short stocks on Webull. We do the entire calculation and we do a live example of all of that in the video on how to short stocks on Webull. You can type it into YouTube or go to our Webull playlist and it will pop up right there. That video is a great one if you're still confused on that because we dive into a perfect example. Now here come the fees. What I would recommend you do is I would recommend you take a screenshot of this or refer to Webull's website when it comes to the fees. They are very, very small, but obviously as you're dealing with more money, these numbers could add up. So you do need to make sure you're paying attention to this. However, Webull is not the one profiting from these fees. These are actually through the clearing firms and whatnot when it comes to different agencies and so forth. In terms of other fees, if you're looking to deposit or withdraw ACH, that's not going to cost you anything. Wire transfer is going to cost you $8 per deposit. If you're going to do additional withdrawals via wire transfers, deposits internationally and withdrawals internationally, that is going to stack up. But here are the dollar amounts for those different actions. Same thing when it comes to stock transfer fees, I would recommend you take a screenshot of this or refer to the website pricing tab. And then there is a postage section right here as well. So that pretty much covers what it comes down to in terms of the fees, commissions, margin rates, shorting fees, all that stuff. Now, in terms of free stocks, as we speak right now, you're going to get two free stocks when you join Webull today. This is limited because they are always changing this promotion. And if you notice as the platform grows over time, 
they focus less on giving free stocks to get users on the platform and they focus more on the platform itself and improving the platform. Webull's done that for sure as of late. So right now, you'll get a free stock between $3 and $300 when you open an account. The second free stock comes when you deposit $5 or more and that free stock we value between $8 and $2,000. That's currently the offer that they are giving you right now. So if you're brand new and you have not signed up, opened an account, you'll click this open an account button. You'll go to webull.com. You'll click on sign up, open an account. From there, you'll want to make sure you download onto your desktop, onto your laptop, onto your mobile device, onto your iPad, whatever works best for you, whatever system you want to use for this. It does not matter. Webull will allow you to use any platform. Okay. So I personally already have this downloaded on my desktop. I'm going to now open that up and we're going to start diving through what Webull has to offer there. A lot of what Webull has to offer on the desktop platform will be very, very similar on the mobile app, obviously just in a smaller form. But towards the end, we're going to talk about some features you're going to get on the mobile app that you can't access, at least as of right now, on the desktop version of Webull, at least for Mac. So here we are inside of our platform right now. Now, what we have is pulled up the watch list section. So over on the left hand side, we have this guy, watch lists. That'll be indicated by this little heart icon up here on the left-hand side. Now, what I'm going to do is, this is kind of where you start. If you open the mobile app, you're gonna start in a very similar place. I'm on the watch list section. I know it's quite a lot in front of us, but we don't need to worry too much about what I have. We can just talk about what you can do and how you can utilize this to the best of your ability. If you can see across the top, I have quite a number of watch lists that I have. I can click onto all of my different watch lists and go into the different stocks that I have in those watch lists associated with that name, right? Okay, so I keep scrolling across. I have all my different watch lists. Now, of course, I want to add, I want to edit, I want to do all that. So how do I do that stuff here on the Webull platform right now? Well, all the way on the right-hand side, now you guys can't see, but all the way on the right-hand side, the upper right-hand side, let me scroll this across so you guys can see. This tab right here will give me multiple options. I can display in different metrics, the simplified mode. I can display in the complete mode, which is going to show me quite a number of stats and data behind each of the stocks on my watch list. And then beyond that, I can go in to edit my watch list. And that's what I want to do here next. So I will click on edit watch list. This is going to pop on up. I can go into, for example, my EV watch list right here, and I can go in and add a symbol. I can remove a symbol, click on a stock and go from there. Now on the left hand side, I can add a watch list. So right here, I will go in and I can click on add test number five, because I've done quite a number of videos. So test five, boom. Okay. Now I'll find test five on the left hand side, click on that. And I can come in here and start adding symbols. So for example, I want to add Apple AAPL, click on that. Boom. Add symbol and do the exact same thing. Repeat the process over and over. And if I want to remove it, make sure I have Apple selected and I can click remove symbol. And just like that, it's gone on the left-hand side. I can also edit the name. And then I can also delete my watch list there if I would like to as well. So there you guys have it. That is watch list. Very, very similar on the mobile app. Now let's move on to the next part. Before we dive into the next section, which is the stocks section right here, what I want to do is I want to alert you guys to the settings portion of the platform. Bottom left of your screen, there'll be a settings little icon. Click on the settings. Here is where we can change quite a number of things. This is also where you're going to get access to hotkeys. So we may as well mention that right now. There's also a video. If you type in Webull hotkeys, I have a video on YouTube already diving deeper into hotkeys, but we'll cover that here as well. So in the settings section right now, here's where we can change our time zone. We can change our language and we can change our themes. Okay. So right now I currently have this theme, like kind of like the dark mode. Um, and I, you can change it back to white. You can change it to kind of a, a darker, even like a black background theme. If you would like to as well, you'll notice that in just one second, there's my screen. It's all white. Okay. So I can edit that as well as the color of arrow. So if a stock's moving up, I have it set to green up, red down. I can change it to red up, green down, or green up and yellow down. You can also have this setting right here, redirect you to a different layout when you double click or search for a stock ticker symbol. So I currently have it set to stocks. I might actually go and set that to my swing trading customized layout. That's something I can do if I would like to. And then I can of course adjust the top bar settings. And underneath that, they'll actually show you if you have the latest version of the platform and I do. So if you don't, you can come here and download the latest version of Webull. So beyond that, there is the hotkey settings. So right now, this is really cool because if you want to be able to, with just a couple click of your keys, be able to execute an order, 
move to a different page. For example, refresh the page, option R. For example, move to my favorite layout, option one. Move to my layout two, option two. I can do all of that with just a few clicks by setting up my hotkeys right here on this section. So I can have hotkeys for moving around the platform. I can have hotkeys for charting. I can have hotkeys that'll draw lines for me. I can have hotkeys then for trading. So that's where we start diving into that, which we're about to do next. So go into trade and here we go. I have my default settings, which I have a limit order set. I can have a limit or a market order there. And then I have my default quantity set to 10 right here, but I can change that if I would like to. Underneath my quantities, I also have additional quantities here. So on my current order, it's going to have a 10. But when I go to click on the quantities, I'll actually have options for 25, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, and 2,500 shares. That's what I personally use. You can have it set to quantities of shares, percentages based on your account size, or dollar amounts. I'd recommend using that if you're someone who likes to actively trade or you want to keep your position sizes pretty much the same. Percentages or dollar amounts work great. This way you can have it set to kind of like a small position, a medium, and then higher or larger, and then even a full position size if you would like to by simply having those selections made right down there. I go back to the hockeys and I click on active trade settings. Now I have a lot more. So now I can do a couple different things. I currently have this set up right here by bid. If I wanted to buy at the bid plus one cent, that's the limit offset that I have right here. All I got to do is click on control B on my keyboard. I have set this up and I have talked more in depth on how to do this in that Weeble Hotkeys video. But just so you know, it's here, it's definitely something that is worth experimenting with, especially if you're more of an active trader who wants to get in, get out fairly fast. This is the place to do that in the hotkeys. And then under the active trade settings, you'll be able to actually change and adjust all of this stuff right here. And there's plenty where that came from, not just for shares. You can do it for options as well. There's the notification tab right here. And so we can actually set different sounds for when orders get filled, orders get canceled and alerts pop up on your screen. There's that. And then there's the account and security section. If you have to make any changes or dive deeper into the security of your account, you can do that there. I do want to also mention there is a learning center on the bottom left. There is this little book icon that is the learning center. So Weeble is going to actually have plenty of information where that came from when it comes down to looking deeper into how to do things, how to create customized layouts, how to use their features and quite a number of kind of helpful guides. So if you're someone who needs more information on certain things, this could be a great place to go. And it's already built into the platform that we have right there. Outside of that, there is a contact us page right here. What you can do go into the contact us page on the bottom left, then you can actually create a new ticket and submit to Weeble. If you have a question, concern, whatnot, all I'll do is go in and type in, let's say, hello, I have a question on this, blah, blah, blah. And I can type them in there and they'll get back to me. There's also a phone number on the Weeble website that you can also contact. So just make sure you're aware of that as well. Now I'm going to go down through the next sections of the platform. We talked about watch list. Let's talk about the stocks section right here. So right now I have this layout pulled up on the stocks section. What I can do is I can start scrolling through a bunch of different stocks on this layout and I can start to build out a trading platform if I would like to. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do this on the customized layout uh, rather than here. I think it's a little bit easier to build your own layout. You can, of course, customize this, but you can build your own layout under the customize tab, which is down here, which we'll get to in a few minutes. That will be easier for you. But you, of course, have the stocks layout that you can customize and change and add to yourself if you would like. And it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Underneath the stocks layout, there is the markets tab. Here we go. We have gotten into the markets tab. So right here, I can customize this a little bit as well, but we have quite a number of things to look at. Up on the top left, we have the index chart. So we can see that right now the market is, uh, looks like a little bit red in terms of SPY, in terms of the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ is barely green. Uh, we have that index chart right there. We have global markets. So how are markets doing across the globe? We can get a good sense for that. Then we have some news right here up on the top. We also have top gainers, active stocks. So what stocks are getting the most volume? We can dive into all that stuff right there. We even have stocks that are hitting new highs. We can hit stocks that are near their highs, stocks that are hitting new lows, near their lows. All that stocks right there, all that info right across the middle. We have a calendar section, very similar to the mobile app as well. It'll tell us what stocks have earnings reports coming out, uh, dividends, reverse stock splits, stock splits, and whatnot. So we'll get some more information on that. And then even IPOs, what stocks are IPOing uh, and, and whatnot. So 
we can get access to all that right there. And then towards the bottom, we have access to a heat map, what stocks are doing well. Then we have the automobiles and auto parts sector is hot right now. We have Tesla, we have GM, Ford, they're doing pretty well. Neo today, Lee, XPEV, uh, they're all up. So then we have especially retailers, Home Depot, Lowe's doing quite well. And as you scroll through, you can get a good sense to what sectors are, are hot, what are doing well. And then there's even an industry section right here, which we can dive into top performing industries as of the past couple of months. That's your market tab for you guys. The next tab on the left-hand side is the screener tab right here. So we have some videos going over how to create customized screeners and how to use the screener on Webull, but we'll dive into a brief example right now. So right here, we're on the screener tab. We can have the screener pulled up. We can go to my screeners. If I save screeners, I have them saved right here. They'll show up right there, but let's build one out for you and show you how to do this. So let's name our screener. Let's name it. Uh, let's name it number one, because why not? We are number one. So Here's where I'll go and I'll start editing my filters. Okay, from that, I can change. I can have the market, the region, exchange, the sector pulled up. Let's do that. I can have volume, market cap. I can even do price points. And then I can, of course, go through more financial indicators and even technical indicators if I would like to. But I'm not going to do all that here for the sake of this video and the sake of your time. So let's say I want to look at stocks that are large market caps. So mid to large market caps. We're looking at big name stocks. I want to look at stocks that fit any price point here. I don't really care about the price point. Let's maybe make that price point $10 or higher, roughly. I can go in and edit that really quick here as well. $10 and up, uh, all the way up. And then I want to look at volume. I don't want to look at low volume. I want to make sure we're looking at high volume stocks only. And then from there, I have 502 matches to look at. So that's quite a number. Maybe I want to consolidate my things here a little bit more, and I'll dive into the sector. So for example, let's dive into... Uh, let's look at uranium. I highlight uranium because maybe for whatever reason, I'm looking at uranium stocks. And here's our one stock, CCJ pulls it up right here. If I double click this guy, it's going to pull it up on the stock tab as we set in our settings just a few minutes ago. So here is our stock pulled up right here. And uh, there it is. So that's something to look at when it comes to the screener feature. Also from here, what I can also do is I could click on the stock and add it to my watch list. If I right click on it, I'll add it to my watch list. I can go in here and add to whatever watch list I would like to. So there you go. That is how you use the screener feature. And then I can also come in here and click on save and it will save my screener now number one. Boom, there it is. It will then save it to my layout. Next, we are under the account tab right here. It's going to give your info like your account value, your market value, your cash balance, your buying power, overnight options, crypto buying power, the details of your account. What's your risk level? How many day trades do you have left if you are under the PDT rule, which means a margin account under $25,000? That will all show up right here. This is a really cool section of the account. So what I'm going to do is I can actually scroll through and I can go into the past six months. I can go to the past year to date, past year, and I can look at how my account has performed over these time frames, right? I can see all that information right there. I can also go to cumulative PL, boom, just like that. So we can see year to date. We can see the net account value. We can see all that stuff. We can customize that. We can go into custom time frames, do all that stuff. We can also look at individual stocks. Let's say I want to look at a stock. Let's say, for example, uh, I want to look at Apple. How have I done with Apple? Well, I don't really trade Apple too much, but it shows me right here that over the uh, whole entirety of my account, I have lost $1.28 trading Apple, probably from examples, uh, to be honest. Let's even, let's say how Tesla's done. Tesla down $36. Uh, let's look at another one, BCTX. I think it's one of my larger winners. And that's right there, $2,800 on the account. So you can see that. Now, what also happens when you click on it right here, it'll show up on the right-hand side. So if I go back to the past six months, I can see how I've done with BCTX over that time frame, And then I can also go into my trading records, which is really cool. So I can see all the way through my records when I bought exactly the date, the time, when I sold the date, the time, how much the fees associated, average price quantities, all that stuff. So that is a massive, massive key. Definitely when you're looking at your account features and looking at how you're performing on stocks where you want to look deeper into what stocks you've done well on, what mistakes you made, all that info and data is going to be stored right here. Next thing to also note, we also have this up on the top right. We can have different kind of components of my P&L set up. So I currently have it set to the past five days. I can go to the past year to date and I can look at all the stocks I have traded year to date. They'll pop up right here and I can scroll through the biggest winners, the biggest losers. Everything is going to show up, which is really, really cool. Outside of that, they'll give you the fees, the dividends, margin interest that I paid, and so forth right there. So that's definitely something that is worth looking at when you're using your account. Next, we have the order entry showing up as the big piece right here. We have orders. So if I currently have working orders, filled orders, canceled orders, pending, partially filled, failed, all orders, 
that's going to show up right there. That's going to be all my history. And then left hand, we have position. So it'll give my current positions, P and L's based on what I am currently holding as of right now. And based on what I currently hold as of right now, we're accumulating onto dips and I'm looking to add into some of these positions that I'm holding. Uh, some of the stocks, at least I like to trade, for example, small caps, at least when I'm filming this video, Summer is very slow, so I like to kind of consolidate into other names, not be very heavy in small caps, and then build into those as you move into the fall and winter months when things generally heat up and volume picks back up in the small cap names. But that's kind of why a lot of things are red, at least as of right now. So that said, we have that. We also have on the left-hand side, the account management. We can go to the options trading section right here. It'll pull up Weebles options trading. It'll dive into kind of what you have access to, all that stuff. You can get your statements, tax documents, trade confirmations, and then there's even the crypto trading button as well. So they'll kind of talk to you or show you exactly how to do that. And it'll kind of link you over to Weebles website where they can talk more about that. Okay, so that is that. Now, customized layout. We'll do a brief overview of how to use a customized layout, how to build it, and then we'll, use, we'll show you guys mine, which we have pulled up right here. So let me go to all, uh, let's go to all the stocks. Let's look at, let's find like Apple or something like that so we can see this nice and easy. Uh, AAPL, boom, here we go. Apple's actually falling off as we speak, down 1.46% today. And we take a look. We have right now on my customized layout, I have added all of these to my layout. Now, this is gonna be completely customizable and up to you. So I have a big chart. I have the options chain pulled up behind the chart, overlaid there. I have my watch list, which I, which I can change right here. I have the quote. I have level two right here, time and sales. I have volume analysis. I have kind of like a scanner or the top gainers, top losers on the day pulled up right there. And then I have my trading widget right here. So let's do a brief look at a, how you can build this yourself. And then we're also going to talk about how to utilize some of the different features in terms of putting in trades, the charts and whatnot. So I'm going to go to new layout right here and they're going to give me multiple options to pick from. I might just want to start with a blank layout or I'll create a new layout based off something else. So I'll click on a blank layout for right now. And I am, I got nothing here. I got nothing here. So I go up here to the widget section in the top right. And that's where I can start adding different features, different widgets. So the first thing I'll probably do is add a chart, which I'll pull up and I'll make nice and big. Maybe I want to add the quote for a stock I'm looking at up here. And then maybe I want to add the order book level two, which I'll pull this guy up right here. And then of course, we're going to need to be able to trade. So go to the trading widget. Let's go to the classic trade, which is what I like to use personally. Everyone's different on that. You can use the active. You can use, for example, active trade will make it a lot easier to kind of get in, get out. Market buys, market sells, bids, all that type of stuff. I can even put my account PL. I personally wouldn't do that because then you're going to be kind of worried about your PL all the time, but you can put that up there too as well. And uh, you can have your positions pulled up. You can have your account info, all that stuff you can have pulled up all in one place on your customized layout. That is how you do that. And I would definitely recommend checking out our detailed videos, diving through how to build a customized layout on Weeble. That video may be on my personal channel, Thomas Carvel, if you guys are not seeing it here on this channel. So that's the basics to building your customized layout. And now in terms of my layout, you guys can of course screenshot it and you know see if you wanna add any of these things to your layout, but let's dive into some of the different aspects here of the layout. So here's the chart. Now, inside of my charting feature, what I want to do here is I want to show you how to do a couple of different things. So I'm going to go to the daily chart right here. I have some charting features. How do I do this? How do I, you know, change the different things here on this chart? Well, up on the top left, I know it's small, but I will zoom in for you in this example. I will go to line style first. Here's where I can change to different candlestick styles. We have actually quite a number of videos going over different candlesticks, hollow candles. We have candlesticks versus lines versus bar charts, all that stuff, Heikinashi. That's where I can change that. I personally like to use hollow candles. Then there's also the drawing feature right here. This is how I can make those lines. So I go to the trend line tab and I can now start to draw trend lines. The trend line feature will also kind of show you kind of the angle. It'll show you the percentage move that you now have on that given stock up here in this little box when it pops on up. And so what I'll do here is, for example, on Apple is I would just connect a couple bottoms. I would connect a couple tops and I can re I would create these trends. Uh, there's more than where that came from. Of course, you can look at even just rectangles. I can do trend channels. So for example, here's a rectangle box I can make. Uh, I can now go into this as well and I can do a trend channel. So if I want to look at Apple's trend right here the past couple of months, boom, we have that trend channel pulled up, buy towards the bottom, sell towards the top. And that was a pretty good strategy over the past couple of weeks. So you can do all that here on the charting feature. There's more where that came from, but that's a good brief overview into what you can add to that. 
There's even a text tool as well. Now let's say we want to buy a stock. So how do we go ahead and do that? How do we buy a stock with Webull? Well, that's why I have this classic trade widget pulled up. There's many different ways you can go about entering orders, but on the classic trade widget, here's what you have. Now, like I said before, we can set up the quantities, the customized ability, the customized aspects of this. For example, we have a limit order set here, but there's many orders where that came from. So we actually have a video going over Webull order types on the channel. So you can dive into that for more information if you want specifics there. But basics in terms of how to utilize this platform and how we can now buy a stock or sell a stock, I can go in here, I can click on the quantity that I would like. I currently have 10 selected. Let's say I want to buy 10 shares of Apple right now. I'll go and I'll do a market order just to make sure we get in and get out pretty quick. I'll click on buy Apple just like that. It's going to show up. We have a little ding and boom, just like that. It popped on up. And now I'm going to go and see if I can sell with a limit order. See if I can make a few cents here. So let's do this limit order and I'll sell this guy for 148.11. And if that hits, it will sell and I will make, you know, one cent on those 10 shares which would be a nice couple, you know, a couple cents uh, gain on Apple. And I can't complain about that. There it is. It just filled. I can't complain about that for an example, right? There you go. Uh, outside of that, there's the shorting option as well. So here I click on short and I can go ahead and short stocks. Not every stock will be available to short on the platform, but that feature is where you do it. If it's not showing up, you can't short it on the platform, at least as of right now. The current order types you have with Webull, we have limit orders, market orders, stop orders, stop limit, trailing stops. And then of course, through that, we can also create kind of an order right here with a stop loss and a take profit all built into one. So if I go ahead and now buy with a limit order at this price, I can immediately have my stop loss and take profit order set. So I can kind of have a bracket order and make sure I have my stop loss with less to lose than I have to gain for my take profit, making sure my risk reward is in line and I will be good to go when it comes to building out my trading plan and building out my order type just like that. Up in the option chain now, I have pulled up right here. Here is the option chain. There's quite a bit you can customize on this as well. Up on the top, that will be where you can customize everything you want to have in here. I'm going to look at currently the option chain that we are on right here. We're 20th of August, 2021, when I'm filming this video. I currently have 20 strikes set. I can change the amount of strikes shown, which will be about 10 to the upside and 10 to the downside based on the price of Apple, which will show up in the middle of the screen right there. If I want to go ahead and buy one of these different options, right? I will go ahead. I can click on the option I want to buy. The left-hand side, we have calls, right-hand side puts. And then we have in the money options with the green back tint on this platform, on this layout. I would go in here and I would click on this and I would go in and now I can customize my order entry. So for example, I have the 145 strike call I want to buy and I can go and click on how many I want to buy, how many uh, contracts I want to buy. For example, one with a limit order of this price. Meanwhile, I can go up here and look at currently the ask and the bid. We have 355 on the ask. We have 350 on the bid. So if I want to get filled right away, I'll buy at the ask and I will get filled right away. And just like that, I can change the time and force and I can set my order and execute that order just like that within the option chain on Apple on the Webull platform. I do now want to mention alerts. So if I'm on my Apple, uh, my widget right now in terms of the chart, I'll click on, I'll control click or I'll right click. And here's where I can set alerts. So I want to create an alert. I go to create alert just like that. Now, on my alert settings. Okay, here we go. I can change all the settings for this, but let's say I'm only going to want to be alerted if Apple goes above $150. Well, I click on price above and I go to 150. Boom, once per day. So if Apple breaks over 150, I will be alerted once per minute, unlimited. If it keeps happening, keeps happening, it will continue to alert me every time it happens. So I'll click on once per day and I can set that up just like that. And I can save it if I would like to. Once you save it and you get alerted, you go up into the top of your platform and go over to the messages tab right here. Go down to the section that'll be price alerts. And here you go. You can go into your price alerts. You can see your price alerts when they hit the times. And then you can go into my alerts and I can go in and I can change and modify my alerts. So for example, I'm going to actually come in here and delete some of these alerts because they're old. I don't need these anymore. For example, XBIO, XELA. I no longer need these guys. They are no longer relevant to me. So I can either modify them or delete them if I choose to do so. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, last section to look at when it comes to the desktop platform here, the desktop trading app, whatever you want to call it, is the paper trading section. So very similar. It's the bottom widget on the left-hand side. Here we are under paper trading. What I want to do right now is I want to go into Apple, okay? 
and I want to have Apple pulled up and I want to potentially paper trade Apple. Okay. So I currently have a customized layout to some degree uh, under the paper trading platform, probably from my past video, uh, which we also have videos talking about paper trading here on the plot on the uh, channel as well. So I'd recommend diving into that, but here we are. So we're looking at Apple right now. Again, we are looking at the paper trading layout. So when it comes to paper trading, make sure on your layout, on your order entries, whatever you're using, there is a PM standing for paper money. If you're, if you see that you're good to go. I am going to buy 10 shares of Apple at the market using the active trade widget. So just like that, I'm going to buy it. It'll show up under my working order section. It takes a second or two for that to fill in the paper trading layout. Give it a second. Once it's no longer working, it should be filled. We'll then have our position and then we can go ahead and sell it. And then we'll see how our paper account value changes. There it is. Our position is now in. We have it filled here and we got filled today at 148.19. Let's see if we can make sure we make some money on this. 148.19, let's see if we can sell those for 148.20. And if we can, we will get that simulated sell set up. Good to go on Apple and it should sell. If I can't make a profit, I'll just get out of this position just so that we can get out for the sake of this video. And there we go, it got filled and we made a couple cents on those Apple shares. So we can see that our account value is now moving up. We can reset our account value if we would like to, to a different level, and we can move along from there. That is how you use the paper trading layout. Very, very similar to the other layout. The only problem is the order types are limited to limit orders and market orders. So you don't have as much flexibility, as much access as you would on the live account, but it's a great way to hone your skills and options, at least as of right now are not available on the paper trading platform with Webull, which is a shame, but I hope that is coming soon. I've been told that it is coming soon, but of course we'll have to see how that plays out. Now we're on the mobile app right here. We have the mobile app pulled up and we're gonna talk about a couple different things. So the next thing we wanna talk about is the community section of the mobile app. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see community. And right here, you can access quite a number of different things. They have top news, there's 24 seven feature, which you're gonna be getting updates on what is going on 24 seven. There's even the courses feature right here. So you can get access to beginner courses, options, how to use fractional shares, how to trade crypto, all that stuff, which is really great. So if you have any questions specifically, it might not be a bad idea to just jump right into the app because they probably have a place or an answer for you there. On top of that, you can also interact with different people in the community. You can also interact and pull up your watch list and pull up different watch lists from other people, which is a great place to go. So for example, I can go into the make a post section right here and I can go ahead and make a post. I can use the cash tag and tag my stock. I can talk about what stock I'm buying, why I'm buying it, the news that's happening. Do I like the news? I think it's a sell, this, that, and everything. And I can of course pull up my stats, my information if I would like to, all on the Webull community section, which is definitely a really cool feature that a lot of people like to use. Now I wanna dive into some of the app perks, okay? So we're on the app. I, what I wanna do is I wanna to go to the watch list, but now I wanna go into, and let's use Apple again as an example. I wanna pull up Apple, okay? So here are some things that you may not always see on the desktop, at least as of right now, not everything that we're gonna show you here is available on desktop. Here's how the app looks. You have level two pulled up right here. I can see all through 20 kind of different price points of level two. And then if I scroll down through this, I have market by order. I have auction crossing, and then I keep going. I have order flow distribution. You can actually add different widgets to your layouts where you can get some of this info, but it's really cool to see. So we can see that large scale orders over the past five days, what days have had large orders, what days haven't, are they coming in, are they sells, are they buys, which is very interesting to note. Now, as I scroll across the bottom of this page, you can go into trade it, obviously. The next section right here is positions. I don't have a position on Apple. The next one is adding an alert, which I don't want to do as we speak right now. We just show you guys how to do that. But the next tab right here is the chart toolbox. So I can draw on the chart, I can add layers, I can compare it, I can show dual charts. There's this replay feature, which I think is really, really cool. If I click on the replay feature right there, take a look at this. What I can do is I can go to a specific day. So for example, it's going back through the 17th of August, 2021, and it is showing me Apple's price action for that day. So now I can speed this up. I can you know move it along, but we can see Apple's price action throughout the day and look at the right-hand side. That right-hand side, that's time and sales. That's showing you every order that is coming through the order book for Apple on this day, the amount of shares and what time exactly. So we can see all of that coming through and it's a great way to really see 
when certain buyers coming in, big orders all of a sudden coming in, followed by a move in the price, it's a great way to go back and rewatch and relearn what's going on and kind of hone in on, you know, why this happened, why this may have happened on any stock you're looking at. And of course, I can change the playback speed. I could change the date if I would like to. Uh, and so I can do all that stuff here with this different feature, which I think is a really cool feature that not many people know about on the app. So there you guys have it. That is pretty much everything we need to cover when it comes to the Webull platform, at least right now. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. Again, there'll be timestamps below uh, in the description box. So you can go through the description and you can see you know individual parts that we talked about, whether it's paper trading, whether that's charting, that's order entries, there's this, there's that. There's a lot when it comes to this platform. Hopefully that covered pretty much everything. If you want more detailed into some of the questions you may have, there may already be a video on this platform on the channel uh, about the platform. So under our Webull playlist, definitely check out that playlist. Definitely check out some other videos on the channel. We dive into different things like our different candlestick types. Right now we're looking at a candlestick chart. We dive into hollow candles. We dive into Heikinashi, bar charts and whatnot, line charts. We talk about all that stuff here on the channel. If you want to subscribe, I would highly recommend doing so for more educational and tutorial based videos around trading the stock market brokers and so on. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to share this with a friend, highly would appreciate that. This hopefully covers everything. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.